so you may get some overflow. Yes, you, know. you can buy a good plastic funnel with a long spout on it. I don't know if you can get one quite this long or not. Uh, Harbor Freight, uh, some auto parts store, stuff like that. But um, this one's homemade. I just use a piece of tubing and wrap the electrical tape to jam it down in the funnel and then put a little more on the outside to try to keep them leaking too bad. And it works. It's what I had laying around the house. I didn't have to buy anything. Shouldn't have to add any more. It should have been plenty to top it off. And again, how much did you put in there? About half a quart. I hooked up the scan gauge so we can keep track of the transmission fluid temperature. You can see it in there. It's a TFT is now at 59. The sensors they use are not extremely accurate at low, low temperature ranges, so it's probably warmer or cooler than that. The one just to the right of it says WTR, that's the water temperature. Now without a cooler, the transmission temperature will normal, normally lag behind the water about 20 degrees until the water gets up around 200, and then the transmission will just go right on by. But as you're going to see, water is going to get extremely warm before the transmission gets any heat in it. Uh, we're looking for 95 to 113 degrees. Um, I usually try on the scan gauge, I try to wait until it's switching back and forth from, on this particular gauge, it tends to go from 98 to 105, back and forth. As it starts to do that, it's when I want to do the final check on the transmission fluid level. Ideally, it would be 104, so I figure when it switch up there, that's that's a good place to check it. Multitask. <laughs> While the fluid is warming up, you can start checking what you need to do to this piece of the grill. And if you look down in here, you can see our top hose clamp is hitting this piece of the grill. So try to mark, try to make sure your grill is pretty much centered over the mounting screw holes. And then try to put a little mark right in the center of that. This bottom piece is aluminum, so it's a little more difficult to cut that notch into. But with any luck, that's the only thing we'll have to do, and this will be ready to pop into place. A little easier if you get some angle on it, just take off little pieces at a time. I could, I could tell from the spacing behind this to the mounting hole up there, this is going to need to be a pretty deep notch, so I went ahead and cut it a little deeper than I might on some of them. Just try to get the loose flakes and the worst of the sharp edges off of there so you don't knock any extra holes in your finger. This is what we're making space for here? Right. It's the upper clamp on there because it's where it's positioned. It tries to run into this thing. We don't want the grill to stick out right there. We'll be able to mount it in the holes it needs to go in and all that. Right there, I don't know if you can see in there. It's not exactly centered. It's not exactly perfect, but it's, it's clear. Yeah, and, and it's close enough, if you can see this hole, you can see that it's all the way against the support in the back of it, so it's going in as far as it ever did. Uh, we don't actually want to mount this yet. We won't be able to check for leaks at the hose fittings and the clamps and all that stuff. After about five minutes of idling while we were doing the notch and the grill and everything, if you look over here, you'll see on the scan gauge, water's up to 136, 138 already. Transmission is only at 64 now. Like I say, that lower end, those those are not reliable because it's probably 70 degrees out here today. But it takes a long time for it to warm up. She worded my best face forward, so. <laughs> yeah.
What was a big screw, small screw on top, bottom right half? Uh, short ones on the top, long ones on the bottom. They'll actually sort of interchange. The top ones are actually, I believe, just a tiny bit bigger than the bottom ones, so better to get them in the right place. And on the bottom one, they are, you don't want any longer than this because these others go into the, the, the bracket they screw into is actually right directly in front of the edge of the radiator. Right. If you get them any longer, you poke a hole in the radiator. Okay. The other one. Yeah, the other one. They go into those little holes, right? Well, there's a slot there. So, Dwayne, this is the conclusion of number what? How many is this now? Uh, I think this is number 18. 18, and you're just buttoning up the last of the. Sure. Yeah, I'll just get these bolts started. Get them snugged up and it should be ready to run down the road. Uh, that's the excess from doing the final level check. We saw the uh, plug we had a while ago when the fluid tanker gets between 95 and 113. I uh, shoot for 105 on the scan gauge. When it gets to that temperature, you pull that plug and you let the excess fluid drain out. You may get a little more, a little less, depending on how full it was when you started and all that you added. And then you put the plug back in and you're pretty much done. You just need to button everything up, I believe. Uh, I, I forgot earlier to clean up the excess off the top of the transmission, so we're going to have to let it cool a little bit to get in there. But I want to try to get that and then it's pretty much done. Just buckle it all up, make sure there's no leaks. And that's the Texas Pigeon Transmission Special? <laughs> <laughs> Something.